dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we are preparing for Christmas. And here we are today reflecting once again on how we could move towards Christmas. We are reflecting especially, as I already told you, on how God prepared the world for Christmas. And that's how we are preparing ourselves. Today we are on the fifth day. Today, let us look at the use of fulfillment passages in the gospel. Especially in the gospel of, gospel of Matthew, the, in the infancy narrative, you have seven passages of the Old Testament quoted during the infancy narrative. That is, during the birth of Jesus especially. And how it was said that as it was said in the earlier, it is fulfilled through and in Jesus. So, the first fulfillment passage we have, Micah chapter 5 verses 2. Prophet Micah chapter 5 verses 2. It says, But you, Bethlehem, Ephrata, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. This prophecy points out to the specific birthplace of the Messiah, fulfilled in Matthew chapter 2, verses 1, when Jesus is born in Bethlehem. Bethlehem, Lehem, bread, Beth, house, the house of bread. The house where the eternal food, the eternal bread, Jesus is born, Bethlehem. During those times, a place had value for money. Even now it is the same, right? The more a place produces money or power, the more the value for that place. Bethlehem did not come in that chart, in that list at all. It was insignificant. But the Lord selected such an insignificant place for himself. Bethlehem was a place where the Lord destined it for the birth of the Savior. Henceforth, Bethlehem had no right to reject saying, I am not worthy enough for the Lord to be born in me. It was the will of God. It was the plan of God and it happened. Bethlehem is a place so it couldn't reject. But if Bethlehem was a person, Surely rejection would have happened. This is how it happens in our life. The Lord selected me. The Lord chose me. It is Lord's plan. It is His doing. What should I do? I should accept. I should, I should rejoice in the Lord. But what do I do? As I already said earlier, we give excuses. We point out to things. Or we brood over the past. And we spoil the plan of God. Bethlehem. You, in you, the Savior will be born. It was already foretold. 500 years before the birth of Jesus. And that's how it happened. Isaiah chapter 7 verses 14 talks about the virgin birth of Jesus. Virgin shall conceive and give birth to a son. And will call him Emmanuel which means God with us. This is fulfilled in Matthew chapter 1, verses 22 to 23. Now, what was prophesied in Isaiah is fulfilled when the virgin gives birth to a child. Now, there are two opposite things. A virgin is someone who cannot give birth. And here we have a virgin giving birth. So it, it shows what? It basically shows nothing is impossible for God. God works in ways in which human mind cannot decipher, cannot understand. That doesn't mean he cannot work in those ways. Henceforth, if I am going through a phase in my life where everything looks very, very tangly, very, very uh, sticky, very, very disturbing, dark, out of my brains, I should cool down and surrender it to God. Virgin giving birth, impossible happening. It does happen. 
So if I'm really preparing for Christmas, no, how should my preparation be? I should surrender all that is happening in me, happening around me in the presence of God and say, Lord, all these things being solved is like a virgin giving birth. Impossible according to my standards. I am not able to see a way out of all these things. But you have done it in the past. You will do it now for me. I trust you. What do you want me to do? Be simple, humble, obedient like Mother Mary. Be trusting like Ruth. Be committed. I am going to do all that, Lord. But you work. Make the impossible possible in my life. Amen.